Welcome back to the Tuck Shop Podcast, everybody. Fall 24, 25 academic year term has begun. We're one week in, as, as usual. I'm joined by David. Hi, David. How was oh, your summer? It was uh, not long enough. I think it's yeah. Everybody expects you to say, right? We were here a lot doing <laughs> things. So we got a whole bunch of schedule for stuff. But we are um, excited to be back for our second year of it's not one year that we've done episodes but that'll be in october but we have uh this is our second academic year doing the work we have had move in got that handled and um got kids as kids in class and, and having kind of fun it's good to have people back on campus it is it is life again pretty much it's it's so qu- interesting to me how always that changes do you remember your move in your freshman year from fall your, well, your first year, because you did your freshman year. Yeah, I moved in in January. You moved in in January. <laughs> <laughs> so forgettable, but unforgettable. As you can imagine, like, you know. Was it bad weather-wise? Or? It, yeah, it was icicles. It was cold. It was like, and you came in in January, so nobody even knew you were here. You kind of. Just slid in with the group. Crossed the border, you know, in the middle of the night. Came in in January, and then that was it. They were yeah. just here. Yeah, and it was cold. I can remember icicles cold it's always nice talking to the the students stuff with their they don't know where anything's at <laughs> um they're all very polite they don't realize that 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 hasn't been worked out of them yet from hard labor in classrooms i went back just as a little curiosity this morning knowing we were going to potentially talk about this <laughs> okay i pulled my transcript <laughs> and i found the four cor- the five courses i had my freshman year here um, Earth and People. Okay. Random assignment because I just needed a social science yeah. credit. Ended up being my my own my degree eventually after I left uh, humanities, as well as a class I'm currently teaching. <laughs> Writing seminar, introduction to communication because I was a communications okay. major. The college, which is kind of like the prep course at that point, like how to basically how to college. <laughs> there was a class for that there was a class for that and health and human disease which was uh i re- only thing i remember about that one is and oddly enough considering later in life how much time people have spent working with my internal organs i was sick every day i took that course i hated what did they teach you in it like anatomy stuff oh, okay. and that kind of th- yeah it was the bio um elective but I, I hated, I, very good, um, faculty was no problem. It was just the subject matter. Like, I came out queasy. Every <laughs> class is just like, no, this is absolutely not for me. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember. I, I transferred in as a sophomore, so I don't remember. I, I think I took a lot of those classes elsewhere. Yeah. But pretty, uh, pretty exciting to have everybody back. Um. We have not been silent or, or, or not, uh, haven't been sitting around doing nothing this summer, though. We have a whole bunch of events Correct. coming up. Correct. Um, that I think we should probably go through yeah. and uh, talk about a little bit. Let me jump in, and I'm just going to, you know, scratch the surface once again, because as we get um, underway more with the weekly podcast coming back, I know that Matt has uh, plans to have some guests on to talk a little bit more in depth. But let me just, uh, I'm going to just run through just everything we got going on so far for the upcoming uh, semester and beyond. So um, coming up in uh, September 28th, uh, during homecoming weekend, we have the education uh, reunion, a 50-year revolution, reunion, 50-year reunion, along with social sciences. Um, So that's going to be taking part uh, during homecoming weekend. Um, Business and enterprise, uh, going to do a two-day reunion uh, for those guys. October 25th and 26th, some exciting stuff uh, planned for that. And again, these reunions are uh, all class reunions. Um, As I mentioned before, you know, with education and social sciences, that weekend is also homecoming weekend, uh, September 27th and 28th. I know um, the Alumni Association Institutional Advancement has a couple of things planned. Uh, You can check those out on the um, the registration page. I'm sure Matt's going to drop all this Uh, I guess, in the comments below. But uh, the Alumni Association uh, will again be hosting the Alumni Hospitality Tent on Saturday. And then um, 
followed by a bonfire right in between. I think it's it's probably hospitality, bonfire, fireworks, I believe. Somewhere in that order. Yeah, yeah. somewhere along those There's orders. a lot of really neat events yeah. that Student Life has been uh, working on, including they're going to be music, the coordinations yep. that yeah. evening as well. They have a... a, a, um, a uh, Kind of like a carnival kind of thing going yeah. on in the afternoon. So in theory, if you're an education or social science alum, you can come out for the reunion and stay through the bonfire sure. and the fireworks. Sure. I'll spend all day on campus. We'll also be doing tours associated with both of those reunions. Correct, correct. There are some fees involved, so we ask that you register. Um, even if you're uh, you know, planning on stopping at the bonfire or stopping, especially um, you know, at the hospitality tent, Registration is not required for either of those events, but we ask that you do register for the hospitality tents. We kind of have an idea of if we're going to see 50 people or five people or 500 people. Um, it will be a cash bar and there'll be uh, snacks, food, that kind of stuff. Um, we'll be carded, so I'll bring, in a, bring an ID. Um, but it's a neat uh, opportunity to just kind of come and hang out, as Matt said, you know, throughout the entire day. Um, tours will be will be conducting, um, so it's uh, it's kind of a neat uh, comeback. Um, again, this is I think something that they've changed, not done in the past, that a lot of the activities take place on Saturday. Um, so coronation, as Matt mentioned, and mm-hmm. some other things. Um, so you know what, just come up and spend a nice fall day um, and look for uh, for us guys uh, with the alumni association. So we we have. Um, that going on, uh, also going to talk uh, just real briefly about an event that we are uh, not hosting. We're working with a gentleman um, that's putting on the Francis Hesselbein Legacy and Leadership Program on o- October 5th. And I'm not going to get too deep into who Frances Hesselbein was, but she was one of our uh, most illustrious uh, alum. She was an alum from the, what was it, the Junior College at the University of Pittsburgh. Yep. Uh, that was down in town. So uh, she went on to one of her biggest claims to fame is she went on to um, to run the Girl Scouts, uh, the national organization. Um, they'll be uh, re- be uh, releasing a documentary of his life at, of her life at that event. Also, be food and uh, some breakout sessions, that kind of thing. So I'm not going to get too much into that. Um, if we're going to throw it down to next year, kind of a couple of things I just want to go over real quick. Um, the Lady Cats basketball program hits 50 years, 50 seasons this season. Um, we've got a couple of things uh, we're planning. And, again, keep an eye on these on our LinkedIn and on our Facebook page. October 30th, um, which is Halloween, uh, middle of the week, we'll be traveling. Lady Cats will travel to uh, the Pete in Oakland for the Lady Cats to play the uh, Panthers. We did this with the uh, men's basketball team last year. Very successful event. Had about 125 uh, alums show up. This will be on October 30th. There will be tickets, uh, free tickets, limited tickets to alum. Wait, real quick. When's the game? October 30th. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Halloween's the Thursday. Okay, I'm sorry. I was off by 31st. one day. I know it was very close. <laughs> I didn't want anyone to get confused. Yeah. yeah. Um, so before the day before Halloween. Believe that. Come, yes. and see, come and see the Lady Cat. So yeah, and keep an eye out, like I said, on our social media platforms. Uh, we will have uh, an amount of limited tickets. Like I said, we, we did about 100 last time. We're about doing the same. Um, then on November 23rd, we're going to do a celebration of 50 seasons, a game at noon, and then a dinner afterwards. Again, keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. Um, one last thing I do want to talk about, it's going to throw us way into spring. Um, May 30th, 31st, uh, we are planning a WUPJ TV radio slash advocate slash programming board reunion. Um, again, we just started, uh, getting a group together to start planning that. That's going to be another two-day deal where um, you can stay overnight here on campus. Uh, keep an eye out for that, um, again, on our social media uh, platforms. If any of these uh, events interest you and you'd like to get more involved as far as the planning side, um, give me a ring, uh, 814-269-2081, or DGJ, the number 7, at pit.edu. We'd love to have you um help organize or get involved on the uh, on the opposite side. I think there's some really cool events. I already registered for social science since it's my division, and, and I've been very grateful for the uh, business folks to let me help contribute since I'm still employed by the business division. But there's some really cool stuff. The um, I think I think the standout um, – the two-day two business in October, if you're business and enterprise, again, 
you may be thinking, oh, I'm social science. Remember, the divisions um, became independent, so we're doing two separate for, for business and enterprise folks. That would be the business degrees, the accounting, the finance, the marketing, and then social science, geography, political science. That's the one in September. Mm-hmm. Business in October. Um, there's also going to be uh, part of that on that Friday of, of the of the two-day event, a series of speakers and sessions that should count towards um, – um, CPE. Yes. Yeah. That's it. I, David's correctly laughing. I keep confusing and 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 mispronouncing it, CPE with CTE, which is the horrible condition people suffer, <laughs> football players and stuff. So CPE, that um, would be available in all kind of different concepts, so from marketing to digital safety to to AI and 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 there's still we're still building those, but. Um, all, all three of those reunions are going to be really cool. The, um, I had a chance to sit down with um, Jim Ditmore from the Francis Hesselbein thing the other day, and he's very, very passionate. So hopefully his passion is a good indicator of a really cool event. So there's lots of going on, lots going on here at UPJ for you to come and, and engage with. And um, like David said, I will have links to all of these things in, mm-hmm. the, um, in the description of the podcast here. So it'll be right down below in your podcast or of choice. And and again, I know these are kind of what we have planned on the slate for the upcoming year, but let's say that, uh, and I say this every, you know, every uh, time that I'm on, um, if you are an organization out there or a group of friends or somebody that wants to get together and do a, uh, a, re- a reunion or come for some tours, you know, give us a call here. We'd be more than happy to help plan that. Um, I know we, we, you know, there's so many different organizations, um, even if it was, you know, uh, I don't know that everyone that lived in Briar or everyone that lived in Hawthorne or whatever, and they want to get together. Or give me a ring. We'll, uh, we'll custom design something, even if it's just a tour of campus. Um, be more than happy to come up and uh, do that, uh, or even if you want to it's, get more intense. It's been a while since we've actually had a group that just said, hey, yeah. we want to just come and tour campus, and we're glad to if you say, hey, there's six or eight of us who want to come and see the old, so the, old yeah. um, the grounds and the, old, uh, the, the buildings and, and where we used to hang out, all the old hangouts. Um, we're glad to do that. Yeah, and weekends are weekends are open game. Uh, again, you know, the planning helps us to uh, make sure that we've got biz, uh, excuse me, uh, buildings open uh, that people want to see. Um, so it's just it's it's an organization thing. So uh, you know, give us a ring, and we'd be more than happy to. Uh, from a group of five to a group of five hundred, uh, we'd find a way to accommodate. Sure. Always glad to do it. Well, we're back, David. And I'm really excited to start <laughs> off our, our series for this, this uh, academic year with a brand new alumni who has a uh, great history with campus as well. Don Miller is coming up next. Joining me today on the episode is Don Miller. Don, thanks for coming and sitting with us for a little bit. Oh, thanks for having me. What year did you graduate? You're an alum. What year did you graduate? 2024. 24. So actually, it just was at your graduation a couple months ago. Yeah, April 27th. What do you do now, though? I am a secretary to the vice president of academic affairs right here at UPJ. So you attended school while you worked here? Absolutely, yes. And you did that for the whole time? I started back about 2009. And it's, so you worked through all those years doing, how, how does that process work? Talk to us, because we've talked to alumni who've returned and done full-time or, or part-time. You did one class at a time while you were working. Uh, one or two. Eventually, I, I moved to two as a term, but uh, started out in the business program, got my business certificate, um, took a little break for personal reasons, and then pushed through and got my bachelor's degree. But you didn't get it in business, did you? No, I didn't. What did you end up getting your degree? English literature. Why English literature? (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what. It got to the point where um, my oldest son had his first child, and I thought, I am a grandmother now, and if I'm not going to do something that I enjoy, um, it was time for me to do something that I enjoy. I guess I should have said it that way. What makes you enjoy it? Because humanities, we, we, we've, uh, you, you, I'd have to go back and look at the list, but you might be our first humanities alum. Oh, okay. That, that did literature. 
mm-hmm. as, an ex- as an example. Well, to be honest with you, if it wasn't literature, it would have been history. Okay. I am a huge history nerd, and, and I find literature to be fascinating because these folks were either writing about history or they were writing something that influenced history. So um, anytime I would read a book, it would send me down a rabbit hole in one direction or another with history. So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds, I think. Anything in, what, what's a, a, a something that stood out from the literature that you had to study? Something that, that you're like, boy, I'm really, really glad I had to read that. I, I went through with, with, and spent a lot of time in doing literature when I was a student here with um, Dr. Cox, Kathy Cox, right. doing Dante and the Bible and Chaucer. Mm-hmm. Those always still today stand out to me 20 plus, 20 years later. Absolutely everything I, I read did that to me. I mean, I guess that's where the geek in me comes in, right? So everything from Frederick Douglass, which I found fascinating, to um, reading about the, um, the Ni- Nigerian and Biafran War and, and th- that horrific um, situation that, that they went through there, to, you know, my favorite, which would be sort of that 18th century English classics but you know i'm a huge fan of like jane austen Mm -hmm. and regency and and all that kind of stuff so you know literature just brings out it's the world you know it's what those people saw it's what they were um, experiencing or maybe what they hoped for you know and that's another another good point you actually ended up being recognized at the academics award ceremony um multiple times for one, because you put it together, <laughs> yeah, I in, did. In I your did. Em- employment role here, right, and then also for your work in humanities. Let's talk about the award from the humanities side first. Okay, what did you win? What did you win, and why did you win it? Well, I was college scholar in in English literature, which was was kind of fun. Um, it was, and then from the perspective of working it, it was interesting because it was kind of hard to shift gears, you know, because I'm kind of like looking around, making sure everybody's sitting where they're supposed to be, making sure, you know, I was, I was very frustrated. If you go back to the honors convocation, which was another event that I planned, and I'm sitting there and I'm frustrated that all the faculty are too squished together and they looked uncomfortable, and, and I'm like making mental notes about how we need to fix this next year. So it's very hard to um, enjoy getting an award when you're critiquing the event. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of... Kind of, it, it's like a double-edged sword, I guess. We were, we were, uh, it was a good event. Um, but it was very, very nice to see you recognized for your academic Thank work you. there. Thank you, yes. As, as well. Um, that, that doesn't, that, it's, it's, it has to be very rewarding to have a passion about that and other people see that passion. Oh, thank you. You also, in that position, had to, you, for those who don't know the story and don't know, know the background, you are relatively new in that role of in that in working at the um, for for the academic VP level. Absolutely, um, my last year of school and my last and the past year of work were just insane. We had a, a cohort of women, wonderful women, and they all retired together. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. So the summer before my last year of school, we went, we had three retirements. I was working in four offices. Um, people were laughing, you know, instead of where's Waldo, it was where's Dawn, you yeah. know, I'm all over the place. And then when we brought some women in to replace, um, you know, to take place in those roles, and they're fantastic people. I already love them, but they needed trained. So now I'm training three people. I'm I'm in an office that I have no idea what I'm doing. There's a learning curve there. So um, add that to your last semester of school. I'm in my senior seminar. I'm writing my final paper. They asked me to present it at the. Um, I'm involved in a uh, honor society, and they asked me to present that when they awarded um, that honor to the new group of students. So I had a lot on my plate that year. It was, I don't know how I got through it, to be honest. One of those cases you look back and you say, how did I get, how did I do all this? It was so fast, you didn't realize you should be scared. Actually, (laughs) I was terrified (laughs) the whole time. I really was, but I didn't fall apart. Because you were, you actually were with us in social science for about 
seven minutes? Seven minutes, but actually I was behind the scenes doing social science work well into October because that's when Nadia came on board. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. I was I was sitting up in Blackington, but I was still answering all of your emails and doing work for you behind the scenes. Yeah, you had quite a year. Yeah, I had quite a year. Yes, I did. But it, it, it seemed to have worked out well. Yes, it did. Yeah. Um, what drew you here... You, you, so you decided to, time-wise, timeline-wise, mm -hmm. you started working here before you began classes here? Yes, I've been here 17 years. That's what I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. What drew you here originally? What, what made you think, I want to go work at campus? It just, it, the I've job actually to tried or? twice to get into the UPJ. It was always somewhere that I, I wanted to work. Um, I worked for CTC first, and I enjoyed my work there. Um, and then, you know, life had other plans for me for a few years. I tried to get on campus the first time it didn't work out. Um, my father was a professor here years ago, so I was familiar. Uh, Chuck Kinderleiter was actually the one that, that hired me for natural sciences. Um, so when... That's right. You would have come in right after Nancy left. Absolutely. No, no. I, Nancy and I worked together. Okay, you worked with... Yeah, okay. I worked with Nancy for years. So, um, so... Basically, when that door opened, I ran because I really wanted to be here. Over that time, what have you... Did anything change perspective-wise being an employee than a student? Um, you, you see absolutely, things a little different? Absolutely. And, I think that being a student made me a better employee, for sure. Especially because I spent, what, about 15 and a half years, 16 years in the divisions. And when you're a student, you really begin to appreciate what students are going through. You know, um, of course, I have my own frustrations with the, the faculty, and I know you teach, you know, <laughs> no, it's okay. so I'm in no way disparaging the faculty. I absolutely love the faculty, but, you know, it's easy to get frustrated if, if the syllabus gets off or if they, you know, for whatever reason, students get stressed. Um, but when you're actually in their shoes, when you're in that classroom, you know, you, you tend to have maybe a little more empathy because you know what they're going through. And I think that made me a, a better employee. Uh, anything changed that over that time being a student that, that you have a longer window of, of being a student because Absolutely, you were taking a class yes. to change. Yeah, I you, did. you went through from a period of time where things were much more centralized in the classroom versus more distributed online plus two years plus of kind of remote kind of not right. classes with covid right what was that journey like um covid actually helped me tremendously and let me tell you why when we went home that's when i started doing two classes a term and it wasn't that i wasn't working as hard we we put in our hours. But if you consider the fact that, you know, you're not spending an hour getting ready to go into the office, you have no commute time, you know, that gives you a lot more time to study and to do things. You know, I think we all experienced that. It was good for hobbies. It was good for physical fitness. I had friends that did, um, you know, really got in a good um, sort of an exercise routine over COVID. For me, I spent that time getting more involved in my studies. So over that two-year period, I think I went round the clock. I was even going in the summer. I think I was getting maybe s six classes a year done. And that really propelled my degree faster. And it, it really helped me out. Um, that's, a, that's an actually a really interesting perspective. Because mm -hmm. you do get, there is a whole theory in, in science behind that there is more productivity being oh there is long. you know i mean i maybe yeah. had my pajama bottoms on you know <laughs> and a nice shirt well you were a student you kind of had to exactly, so yeah that's, that's the seems funny to be thing is uniform. one of the dumbest things that tells you how goofy i am sometimes when we'd have class i would literally put perfume on before class i was like teasing people about that i'm like i would put perfume on before i turn on zoom for a like, remote they, they course. would smell me <laughs> I always thought that was the weirdest thing. That was about the weirdest part of COVID for me. I always smelled good, even though I was remote. Well, somebody, I'm sure, appreciated yeah, it. Yeah, I guess they appreciated it. Maybe my cats appreciated it. Nice. Having the perspective the other way now, mm -hmm. as a student, what would you, what would you, did you ever have a chance to, or did you, would you tell students 
to help them understand more of the how things happen behind the scenes that they don't necessarily see to work better with faculty, with staff, with how offices work? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think... Well, there's two, two things that I would tell them. First of all, they need to be proactive and diligent and take ownership. Um, I am all for hand-holding, you know, and taking care of kids. And I know we pride ourselves in that here, that we're a, a one-on-one mm-hmm. kind of school. We, we take care of our students. We don't just throw them out, you know, into the wild and expect them to figure things out. But, but when push comes to shove, we have to take ownership of our own success. And I'm finding students, and I've, I've seen a wide range of students now, you know. I mean, I was um, – the students that graduated the first year – I taught here, gosh, they would be almost 40 years old now. So that's a lot, you know. The students today, you know, they they don't take ownership in the sense that they don't stay diligent with what they need. Um, they kind of give up too soon. So I would just, you know, tell a student, hey, this is your life. This is important keep at it until you get the help you need, you know, ask the next person, you're worth it. So you, you wrap everything up, you get to participate in graduation, mm-hmm. not just as a member of staff, but now as an actual graduate, you get to yep. walk across the stage. We, we were there, we saw you. Um, classes are back. Do you miss the, the idea that as you're getting ready here, we're getting um, term to start that you're not going to be sitting in the class. Uh, that's that is going to. I I said to my husband, I said I think on August 26th, that's when it's going to hit me that I graduated because I'm in summer now and I haven't always gone to class we're over pre, the for, summer. For everyone who's online, you know, we're pre-recording here just right, a couple right. days before I'm the in term the summer start. here. So. so I think when August 26th hits and I don't have my new notebooks and my pens, that's another way I'm a, a geek. And I think that's why I love office work. I've always been the, you know, I always like my papers and my notebooks and my, you know, and I'm not going to have that. I'm may, am I going to miss it? I think I might, you know, I might miss it just a little bit. Do you think you'll miss it enough to come back and do another one? Another degree here? I don't know. I was thinking about going on for school. Haven't quite decided yet. See, I want you to miss it when, yeah, we'll when the see. term starts. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I have enough work in, in the office that I'm at that I really don't need extra stress at the moment. You you have a lot on that plate and a lot of Absolutely. people who rely on your a office. Lot, and a lot, a lot on my plate. For those who don't know the hierarchy, and, and I've been reaching out and we're trying to hopefully secure your your boss as well for the show you work for dr rabley mm-hmm. ray rabley who's been a long time fixture of the campus and very popular so we're trying to get him on the show too. talk I'll, about I'll, his new role i'll try i'll there put in go. the good word he for said you. he would so i'm sure i'm sure he would i'll just put you on his schedule then oh well, yeah there you yeah, go there he you just go. doesn't know where he's going to a meeting i'm he in shows charge up. of his calendar oh you this know? is why you're the best there you go Don, congratulations again thank on you your so degree much. and the hard work. Thank we you appreciate so much. It. And welcome to the ranks of the alumni. Well, thank you. I am very proud to be here. The Tuck Shop podcast is recorded live on the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown campus. Update your contact information with us by visiting johnstown.pitt.edu slash alumni. Connect with us online via Facebook and LinkedIn. Or consider donating to the university at give to that's g i v e t o dot pit dot edu slash give upj.